What if I just do this? God, this is not safe. Potentially gonna try and launch the boat all by myself for the first time in the channel's history, or, or really ever. I haven't launched this boat at all, and I'm kind of sketched out just because of that fact. And I know there's a couple different ways to do it with like a rope. Anyways, we may try and launch the boat here in just a minute. And if I do, I'm gonna make sure I'm GoPro'd up recording every second, because hopefully the thing doesn't drift away and me have to go swimming for it. Devin would be so mad if something goes wrong when I drop this thing in. That's kind of what I'm most worried about. I'm gonna back up slowly and uh, try not to get it to actually come off of that sucker and then I'm going to uh, I guess I'm just gonna try and motor it off the trailer after that first time for everything I could see a million ways this could go south very quickly so I'm just gonna try and inch it back slow and steady not get it to where it comes loose off the trailer and then we are going to uh, go back there and try and motor it off the trailer as long as it's like, you know, just about to the perfect spot. That is the goal. So, here we are taking up the middle lane as you can see in the rear view. Backing her on up. I won't lie, this kind of has me sketched out. There we go. Oh, I think she pulled. I think it's kind of loose now. Let's see what happened. How far are we? Are we too far back? We might be too far back, which could be like the perfect amount. Yeah, it's like almost free floating. So the motor should be able to pull it, pull it away. So let me go ahead and toss the e-brake on there. Do I turn this off and lock it? Probably smart. There's no one at this ramp. This ramp like doesn't get used. I guess is it just smart for me to have everything on me? Probably. Let's see what we got here. So I need to now take this strap off. If I loosen it anymore, is this bad boy gonna just like decide to float away? I have a strong feeling that could happen. Oh yeah. Oh boy. Oh boy, I'm trying to go slow, but it's just wanting to come off of here. Oh boy. It's getting closer and closer. Kind of sketched out, I won't lie. You know what, I'll pull the trailer up a little bit. That's what I'll do. Oh shit. Oop. Let me pull this thing forward just a little bit more. That way I'm less concerned. I know I can get the boat off there easily. I think I can. Yeah, it's too far in the water. Do I just like jump on there? All right, let's do this again. E-brake off. Uh, how are we looking here? Uh, let's give that a whirl. Let's give that a whirl. E-brake, I didn't pull it up much. Keys out, locked up. We'll be back for that. Let's see. All right, we are like slightly less in the water, but it's, I know it's gonna be a, a game of inches. Yeah. Okay, there we go, it stopped sliding. See, I like that. As I get in the boat though, it might decide it wants to shift, especially as I get my weight towards the back. I'm shaking the trailer a little bit. Yeah, but the back end seems a little loose. Okay, I like this. All right, unstrapping it. Never done this before. Okay. Boom, trim her down, fire it up. All right, now can I back off this thing? Get the F out of here. I'm gonna trim it all the way down now. I didn't wanna trim it all the way down because I was a little nervous having to trim all the way down, being like that far up. You know, usually like we come off the trailer with a little momentum. Wow, we done did it. We did it. Whoa, this is a first for everything, ladies and gents. Wow, I bet you guys do this every day and you're gonna drop the most hateful comments. I have never done that. Oh boy. Save clip. All right, there we go. We are paralleled, paralleled. We're sitting up against the dock pretty dadgum good. Ugh. I would like to tie the front end to this guy right here though. Make a little extra knot, bam. Hit that right there. Woo! Let's go. Gotcha, sir. Ah. Ryan hooking us up with the ice. 
Y'all, we made it to the spot where we were tearing them up yesterday. A couple were decent size, and uh, there's no boaters over here. And look, Ryan hooked it up for the birthday. He brought me a speckled citizen, dude, the homie. You guys gotta go drop a sub to the channel. We've been doing a lot of fishing together lately, and we're uh, doing a lot of videos together. And look at this. He's showing you all the exclusives. He literally just brought a working class zero six inch battle shad. These things just went on sale. And if you don't know, you don't know. They sold out in like 30 seconds. You gotta go to workingclasszero.com or net, and you can sign up for the newsletter. It's the only way you're ever gonna get these. And then he's also got this three to six foot diver. It's a sick bluegill bait. He was just telling me it's by UFO Baits. Custom paint literally could tear them up on the riprap right here. Uh, so yeah, look forward to some big baits getting thrown today as well as he's gonna be doing, I think a Cast King versus Shimano type of uh, video. Cast Kings are very popular. They're nice and affordable. We had purchased a lot when we first started fishing ourselves. And so he's gonna show you guys a little bit of a comparison. And I'm just gonna go ahead and uh, try and catch some fishies right here for you guys to to tie in with the boat launch. He even got us a Celsius, dude. I'm so spoiled when I go fishing with Ryan. I don't know why I don't fish. <laughs> Ryan's gonna be in every video from now on. <laughs> Spot lock doesn't always work under these bridges, y'all. It likes to shoot you into them sometimes. So, as if I wasn't energized enough, <laughs> we got Fuji Apple Pear for y'all today. Compliments of Riggs himself. What a gentleman. We're gonna see if Spot lock decides to work even though the satellites are a little thrown off under the bridges sometimes and it just likes to do 360s. Like if we don't catch anything pretty quick, I think we should go elsewhere. It's definitely not as stacked with bait as it was yesterday. Like yesterday was overcast. Ooh, nope. What do I have? Do I have a fish? I got a fish. Oh, well, well, we caught us something. <laughs> we're, we're talking about making moves and we did catch a spot, man. A little spot on the uh, cranky cranky. That is for real. That's on the bug too. No net. There we go, y'all. First one out here on Lake Louisville. We got it on the brand new Guggenbaits new punch. I was thinking it was gonna be a crankbait game right here because that storm earlier. I'm gonna let little guy go. But I was thinking this riprap was gonna be all about the crankbaits. It's been overcast for almost the entire day after a little bit of rainfall. Other than that, it's just been bright and sunny this entire week. So I was thinking, move and bite, move and bite, move and bite. Throwing the crank, didn't see much. Uh, it says we're in 14 feet of water, but if we step right here, we're in like 28 feet. It's real deep, so I had a heavy weight on there just to get down low. And that one came right off the bottom as soon as it hit, just probably in 12 feet of water. Let's see if we can get some more. I think we're gonna run this whole line now. Yeah? You got a uh, light line on that, I think? Yeah, that's the 10 pound. Good work. Excellent job. Golly. Probably could have uh, boat flipped him because that was in there. All right, guys, second fish in the boat, this time on that crank. Anyways, a little tight, but uh, a fish in the boat nonetheless. Get it back in the water. Got something? Okay. Feel small? All right. Oh, there you go. There you go. Not, oh, you still got him. Good. Trouble hook slight line. That's the, maybe the biggest one, honestly. Third fish in the boat, closing in on sunset. We hopped around a little bit and we ended up finding ourselves on the opposite end under that bridge that we were fishing. You know, we kind of got them dialed in a little bit. Tuesday, we gotta do a taco release. Bye. And that'll just about do it for Lake Louisville, you guys. We caught a handful. I got to catch some with Devin on her night off. It was a ton of fun. But uh, almost even more exciting about today's episode is that we launched the bass boat solo for the first time after owning it for a little over a year. It just seems like we always go out with folks and someone's backing me in or what have you, right? It's two-person operation many times. And so now that we're armed with this knowledge, we're going to go out and we're going to be launching that thing solo. We might do some solo days out on the bass boat. Let me know what lakes in the DFW area you'd like to see us fish. Also. It would be fun to do more two or three day trips with Devin and I where we go and hit some bigger uh, name lakes, not necessarily local to us right here in Texas. So if you know some good spots somewhere near Texas, maybe we'll get out and fish those lakes for y'all in the near future. Also, so much new stuff is coming out from Guggen Baits and Guggen Squad very shortly that you have a lot to look forward to as far as that goes. Speaking of, if you're looking at getting a new rod, all their rods are 10% off with code Weston at GuggenSquad.com. If y'all need to restock on baits, grab you some more Bandito bugs. We've got a lot of new stuff coming, but uh, if you need some of the current goodness, go ahead and head over there, 10% off. And same thing 
with the long sleeve hooded shirts we're always wearing to keep us cool in the summertime, as well as any other apparel. Everything on GuggenSquad.com is 10% off with code Weston. So go ahead and grab you some goodies if you're running low. And with that, we'll catch you guys on the next episode. Who knows what we're going to be up to? Kayaks, bank, boat, John, whatever y'all want. See ya.